Hi, Carl here for Pro V TV, and today we're taking a look at this extraordinary lens from Lauer. This is their 24 millimeter macro probe lens. And it's a lens that I'm sure a lot of you have already seen on the internet because a lot of people have been talking about this lens. We've had a huge amount of interest from customers on this lens. And I think that's for a variety of different reasons. I mean, it is so dramatically different to anything else that's out there pretty much on the market. You only have to look at it to understand that straight away. It just looks completely different to most other lens options out there. But I think the main reason why it's had so much interest is because it opens up this whole new world of possibilities for people. Basically, if you're involved in any sort of macro work, a probe lens like this is really worth considering because it does give you much more creative options in terms of how you can show your macro subject. And we'll go into that in more detail in a minute. But I think before we get started on that, it's important to understand that probe lenses are not something that's new at all. Probe lenses have been around for many, many, many years, but they've always been really quite expensive, prohibitively so. I mean, the most common high-end probe lenses that are on the market for macro work cost nearly as much to rent per day as this lens costs to buy outright. So for that reason, and pretty much that reason alone, that's why this lens has had so much interest from people and why it's opening up so many creative possibilities for so many of our customers. So let's break down what the lens can actually do. It's a 24 millimeter macro probe lens. And we've seen 24 millimeter macro lenses many times before. In fact, a lot of wide angle lenses like that are actually classed as macro lenses purely because you can focus so close to the front element of the lens. But if you think about shooting macro work with a wide angle lens like that, it's gonna be impractical a lot of the time. You're gonna get the shadow of your camera cast onto your subject. You're gonna scare away your subject if it's a live animal or something like that. And if you want to shoot with a larger rig like this motion control solution for my footage that we've got here, it's just gonna be completely impractical. You're gonna to have to be so close to your subject, there's no way you're gonna be able to do a move like this around your subject. And so for a lot of macro work, a wide angle lens like that just does not work for most people. And so because of that, a lot of the macro lenses that we end up recommending to customers are telephoto options. A 100 millimeter telephoto macro lens, for example, is a very, very popular choice. And they're beautiful lenses. You get a very, very detailed, isolated view of your subject. It really lets your background fall away and focus down on just the subject. And that's amazing for some work, but sometimes you want to tie in the convenience of having a telephoto option so that your camera can be further away from your subject like that. But you also want that aesthetic of a wide angle lens because the look is completely different. If you have a wide angle lens being that close to your um, subject like you are with this probe lens because it's so long you can get this end right up close to your subject most of the time. It gives you a very wide angle field of view. It lets you see a lot more of the environment around your subject, which for some work is really important. If you picture wildlife or anything like that, being able to see the environment that your subject is in is quite an important part of that film. And obviously sometimes you want that telephoto option so that you can isolate the subject right down. So having both options available to people at an affordable price point is why this lens has opened up so many creative possibilities for our customers.
The minimum focus distance is two centimeters, and that ends up giving you a magnification ratio of two to one, so it's perfect for macro work. The lens is 40 centimeters long, and at the end of the lens, it's only two centimeters wide. And this entire front half of the lens is completely waterproof. So you can actually submerge the lens down into a pond or something like that that you might want to be getting macro shots of, right up until where this USB port is here on the bottom of the lens. And that USB port is to power the LED that's at the front of the lens. And you can power that with a simple USB cable from a V-Lock battery or a battery like that, which has got a USB power out, or maybe your camera itself has got a USB power out. Or if you don't have any of those options, you can just use like a USB battery bank that we use to charge our phones, anything like that. But Lawa do supply the cable that you need to do that with the lens, and it's got a nice dimmer control on it to raise and lower the brightness of the LED at the front. In terms of the quality of that LED, it's not the most color accurate LED in the world by any stretch of the imagination. I certainly would recommend that using only when you really need to. If you are able to use your own um, external light sources or professional lights, or if you're able to shoot with just daylight, I really recommend that you do that. Think of the light that's actually on the end of the lens more as a get out of jail free card, if you like, so that when you're in situations where you just can't use any other light source, maybe you're poking the lens down into a cave, something like that. At least you've got something to illuminate your subject. It is perfect for situations like that, but I really would recommend don't use it unless you absolutely have to. The main compromise that you're gonna have when shooting with this lens is that it's got a maximum aperture of f 14. And for a lot of people that are used to ordinary lenses rather than probe lenses, not being able to open up wider than f14 is going to be a significant drawback for people. I mean, you're going to need a lot of light when you're using this. You do get used to it though, and yes, you need a lot of light, but really there's no other choice if you want to use a probe lens. It's just physics, unfortunately. When you've got a long, thin lens like this, you have to have a small aperture to go along with it. Unfortunately, there's no way around that. It's just the nature of the beast when you're shooting with probe lenses like this. One thing I would say though, is that it is much easier to deal with having to stay at f14 now than it ever has been throughout history. We've got cameras that are far better at high ISOs than they ever have been. And we've got lighting that's far easier to travel with, to run off batteries, and can go far brighter when run off batteries than has ever been possible before. So if you have to deal with shooting with an F14 lens, even in remote conditions, it's much easier now than it ever has been. One thing I really like that Laura have done though as well is that you can have EF mount or PL mount and as well as having the choice between the two lens mounts you can have cine or stills versions of the lens itself and all that actually changes there's not that much difference in price all that it really changes is the gears on the um, the focus and on the aperture the cine version just has some raised gears on the aperture ring, the focus throw, everything like that is exactly the same on the two lenses and the optics are exactly the same if you're trying to choose between them. You just want that cine version and maybe the PL if you're wanting to use it with larger cine cameras and lens control systems and for it to work in that sort of environment. And then you want the EF with the stills version of the lens if you're gonna want it on small little cameras like this, for example. It's great that Lauer have envisaged the two sort of scenarios where we'd be most likely to use this lens and given us different options that are best suited for each of them. At its heart, this lens is all about opening up the potential of getting that wide angle field of view when you can't physically get your entire camera rig two centimeters away from your subject. Sometimes that wide angle field of view is exactly what you want for your macro shots. And up until this lens, 
The only way to get that was to physically get your entire camera rig and put it right next to your subject or spend a lot of money on macro probe lenses. This has opened up the world of macro probe lenses to a whole new market and has made it accessible for everyone. And because of that, I really love this lens. It has been so much fun going out and shooting with this. It just opens up a whole load of creative possibilities, which we just couldn't achieve before. It's a brilliant little lens. And if you're looking to pick one of these up for yourself, just follow the links to the ProV website down in the description down below. And if you've got any questions at all, just leave them down in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.